It was a fast three and a half hour ride to Paestum on the Autostrada. We're back in time to the time where the Greeks called it Posidonia at the start of the 7th century BC. The Romans changed its name after defeating the Greeks in 273 BC. This street map of Paestum shows the temples in pale yellow and the agora or marketplace in green. For its size, the temples are enormous. There is, of course, this small amphitheater, but only a part of it is visible. In the fascisti time, a civil engineer built a road across the other half and was jailed for wanton destruction of an historic site. The temple nearest is dedicated to Apollo and dates back to 450 BC, while the other is to Hera, wife of Zeus, and is the oldest by far, going back to 550 BC. As hot as it was that day, it wasn't difficult for me as I got closer to begin to see the massiveness of these buildings. Imagine the number of men, slaves of course, that it took to move sections of these pillars and to put each one in its place. Man, this pastem, uh, it's too hot to handle. It's frying my brains. I'm out of here. I couldn't get out of pastem fast enough. The heat and the humility, it's the humility that brings you low, were unbearable. We zipped along the coast road through the edges of Salerno. Then it was up, up and away, twisting and turning on the beginnings of the Amalfi Drive. Plotzlich we ground to a halt. Dunque, for the next two to three miles, just crawled along in a traffic jam. Massimo, it's time to stick a fork in it. Lunchtime. Luckily, we found a hotel with a view, overlooking the entrance to the Salerno Harbor and the beach of Vietri sul Mare. From the open-sided dining room, the beach looked very inviting. But then creature comfort was making itself known. So I stuck a fork in it and finished it off with some local vino rosso. After lunch, the traffic jam was still jamming. Massimo did some fast maneuvering a la Ascari or Farina, and we were on the true Amalfi Drive and before long in front of the Duomo of St. Andrew in Amalfi itself. There were just too, too many steps up and particularly down for me. Sad to say, I had to let this one Duomo get by me. The Duomo, founded in the 9th century, was rebuilt in the 11th. The facade, the center of which is Christ surrounded by the angels above the 12 apostles, is from the late 1800s. But the bronze doors that you just glimpsed are from the year 1000. In the 11th century, it was a powerful maritime city of 60,000 souls, rivaling both Genoa and Venice. Now it's just one of those American tourist traps, obese beasts with their cappuccinos. If it weren't for all the tourists, it would be a nice place. But I suppose it would be dead. It's St. Andrew for Scotland, right? No, 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 no. It's St. George for England, St. Patrick for Ireland, St. David for Wales, and St. Pancras for Scotland. That's right. Massimo! Die Augen rechts, ein Blick auf die Natur, die Augen geradeaus. They must understand American football here. Illegal procedure, backfield in motion. Business is so cutthroat here that each restaurant has a waiter out front acting as a shill. It was just a short half hour ride from Amalfi to Praiano. Driving through Praiano itself, still twisting and winding, we ended up at my favorite hotel. Hotel Pellegrino, the Mediterranean like a mirror, with only the wake of a small fishing boat to disturb it. Finally, we're back amongst the bougainvillea of Hotel Pellegrino's breakfast terrace, and in the caring hands of Luigi and Sandra Rispoli and family. It's so nice to be made welcome in such a friendly, family-run hostelry. Early the next morning, Luigi drove Massimo and I to Praiano Harbor. Together with several others and more that we picked up in Positano, we headed for the Isle of Capri. 
the boat captain's cousin took the day off from working in a shop in Praiano. Gabriella Gambardella introduced herself to all of us and was the charming official icebreaker of the party. Gabriella was the life of the party and in typical Italian style flirted with all the men. On my first trip south to Pompeii, Massimo and I stopped and had a drink at the Hotel San Pietro built into the rock. Well, here it is from the seaside. We whipped around the island to the far side, passing the main harbor where all the big ships from Napoli come in. Look at those beautiful big homes. Ah, there it is. My other boat. Just a little further down the coast was the famous Blue Grotto. I didn't go in. I would have had to have transferred into a rowboat with one hand gripping my seven and a half pound high definition camera. No thanks. The risk was too high versus the reward. No one else wanted to go to the Blue Grotto. So we motored to a point where it was swim time. Off the end of the boat, through a tunnel in the rock and out the other side where they were all picked up. Age does have its limitations. They all did a Brighton and we were back in civvies again. We muttered back around the aisle and the captain put us ashore in what's known as the Marina Piccola or the little marina. For goats, you could walk up the hill. We took a short vertical cab ride with a nice Australian couple. You still have a 200 yard walk uphill till you get to the top and can look down the other side and see the main harbor with the big tourist ships coming in. It's quite a sight. But remember, all these ships are dumping hundreds of day trippers on the island. Back in the days of La Dolce Vita, when Peter Van Wood was known as the Little Prince of Capri, it was sparsely populated with the rich and famous. Now it's hoi polloi, the obligatory photo album pictures to prove that Fred and Mary, our nice Australian couple, were actually in Capri. It's like the Alps. It's always bloody up. There never seems to be a down. But you can count on me to find the best watering hole in town, the five-star Quisisana Hotel, for some R&R, &R, while Massimo, Fred and Mary go gallivanting on the road again with a pause at a lovely estate. These narrow tree and shrub-lined paths remind me of some twittens I've known. Finally, we reach Nirvana, the dining room of the Hotel Brunella. It was worth the climb for this fantastic view, together with Olio e Convivio. Here this part of the story ends, as we must return by boat to Luigi in Paiano before my assault on La Regia di Caserta.